And we may need to walk like a chicken or something like that. Uh, he's been known to do things of that nature, so take it away. Thank you, guys. Give him a round of applause. Come on. Well, this is my first time in Austin. I don't know if this is too loud or not. Uh, maybe we can adjust it. Perfect. Okay, test. We good? Everything good? Is this better, guys? Okay, I don't want to be in your ear too loud. I like to project sometimes. So, well, my name is Marcel Klein, for those of you guys who don't know. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you guys how to transform your life by changing your mindset. How many of us would like to control our emotions a little bit better? Just show of hands. How many of us would like to control our thoughts? Let's say you start something, <laughs> right? Show of hands. You start something and then you stop. Or you want more out of life, maybe you're not happy where you're at, or maybe you are doing really well, but you want to go to the next level. So today I'm going to show you how to break past anything that's stopping you psychologically. And how we're going to do that is I'm going to teach you a little bit more about your mind. Now, this is a precursor to this weekend. As a matter of fact, this weekend is probably going to be one of the best seminars you could ever attend. So I wanted to really, really encourage you guys to understand that this weekend, starting now, right, we have this free tour, and then we have Summit. Summit's going to be one of the most incredible things you've ever seen because there's a point to prove. One, most speakers that are going to be there haven't really gotten to speak much for almost a year because we've been fucking locked down in the most ridiculous way. Yeah. Do not disturb. It's obviously better to have on a phone, huh? Right? So everyone's going to come with their A game. Now, what I want to encourage you guys to do is take notes, have your phone out, because I can promise you what I'm going to teach you today is going to change your fucking life. And it, it's not going to change it in a small way. It's going to change it in a drastic way. I'm going to literally show you how to control your mind, how to control your emotions so you can take control of your life. How many of us are interested in that? Say yes. Woo! Now, how many of us are interested in actually being able to take control of our level of confidence? Wherever it's at, you want to bring it to the highest level. Say yes. Okay, I need everyone's full-on participation because if we're going to change our life, we're going to do it as a group and we're going to participate full out. So I want to know that everyone in this room is here to participate. Everyone in this room is ready to go full out. So again, if you're ready to change your life, say yes. yes. Let me see a show of hands. Yes. yes. Show of hands. Everyone, bring your hands up. Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay, I want you guys to 100% show me that you're here to participate because I can't change your life for you but I will give you the tools and the blueprints that I've used for tens of thousands of my personal clients, some of which you saw fight this weekend. You saw the Jake fight. You don't know who he is? Does anyone know who he is? <laughs> is this like a Texas thing? Okay, so if you know who he is, I've actually coached him. Before we even started boxing, I was working with him to help him get into this and have the most incredible mindset. So if you look at someone at the highest level, because he really has an incredible mindset, and he, whether you like him or not, is one of the best marketers I've ever seen in my lifetime. Right? He's literally, his marketing skills are through the roof. Everything he does is on purpose. It's deliberate. It's intentional. He's one of the nicest people I've ever met. And I'll tell you, you look at someone like that who's making tens of millions of dollars a year. Why do they work on themselves? Because they understand what it means. Now, when I first started personal development, I used to go to seminars. I'm like, yeah, I'll go listen to speakers because part of me wanted to learn. But another part of me was like, oh, what do they know? I don't want to listen. Now, if you go here with an open mind, you're going to change your life. If you come going to work skeptical. Who the fuck is that? That guy. Well, then you may not change. So I encourage you guys to come here with an open mind, get ready to change your life because I'm about to show you how to actually transform your belief system. Now, how many of us have heard of the word hypnosis before? So I'm probably the best hypnotist in the world, literally the best hypnotist on the planet. It didn't happen overnight. It took me a long time to get to this point. But what I've discovered through my experience is this. Change happens in an instant. If you want to change your life, it happens in a moment. It doesn't take years to change. A lot of people think it takes years to become more confident, to get rid of a fear, to change a bad habit, to decide to become motivated and actually follow through. That's absolute bullshit. And I'm here to show you how to change in an instant. So when does change happen? Now. When does change happen? Now. I need you guys to play full out. If you're going to sit here and not pay attention or not fucking participate, how are you going to get a transformation? Transformation comes from participation. So if I don't hear everyone's voice, I'm not going to move on. When does change happen? Now! Thank you. From now on, that's the benchmark. Anything below that, we stop moving forward. Do we understand? Yes? yes. Thank you. I want everyone's participation. I want everyone here because I'm here to change your life. I didn't fucking fly to Austin, Texas for you guys not to get your lives changed. And today we're going to change your fucking life. I'm sure you guys don't want to waste your time. Time is the most valuable resource on the planet. 
And that's why we're here. We're not here to waste time. We're here to save time. And that's what I'm going to help you guys do today. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is how the mind works. How many of us are interested in that? Yes. Well, if you're not interested in that, you fucking sure as hell should be because that's what controls your whole life. That's what runs everything you do. You think what you do is on purpose from the second you wake up in the morning, how you tie your shoes, how you eat your breakfast, what side of your mouth you chew your fucking food on, and when you decide to swallow after a certain amount of chews, after it feels a certain way, right, versus how you walk, how you talk, what you think about, about 95% of the time, that all happens up in here. And guess what? How many of us, on average, our life looks the same as it did maybe a year ago? Honest. How many of us have had drastic improvement last year? I can guarantee you anyone who's had a drastic improvement has had a drastic change in the way they think. Anyone here disagree with that? Of course not. Because the way you think changes how you feel. How you feel, emotion, puts us in motion. So if we understand this concept, if we're feeling the wrong feelings, we're going to take the wrong action. And this is the number one thing I want you to understand today. Your emotions control your actions. Write that down. I think that's pretty important. Right? Our emotions control our actions. Now, you might be thinking, I don't need to be taking notes. Well, I promise you, as good of a memory as you have, you're not going to memorize this entire talk, and you're not going to memorize the content. I'm not going to be riffing up here. I'm going to be teaching up here. So if you really want to get the most out of this, you should write things down. The cheapest my seminars ever cost, usually, outside of an RSD setting, are five to $10,000 at the cheapest. So I'm doing this here because Owen has been my friend for a long time. Jeff has been my friend for a long time. That's why I fly in. I like changing lives. I'm not just doing this for money. But I'm telling you, if you were to learn this in a different context from me, you'd be paying at least $5,000 or more. So I highly recommend you write this stuff down. Just because you're getting it for free right here doesn't mean this is not, this is shitty cheap content. You're not going to find it anywhere else. So no motion things in motion. You have to ask yourself, well, what patterns are we doing? So really quick, how many of us here is... How many of us here believe we have a power? Everyone just, just say yes. Yeah. Participate. Participate. Everyone participate. Focus. Pay attention. Say yes. Yes. Raise your hand. Say yes. Yes. If you're not raising your hand, you're not participating. Say yes. Raise your hand. Yes. Say yes. 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 Okay. I didn't tell you to say yes, but we already formed a pattern. That's how fast patterns are formed. So we have patterns that are formed instantaneously. Now, what does that show us? Well, it shows us we can form new habits in an instant. We could form new associations in an instant. You just figure it out that when I go like this, we go, yes, right? That's what we figure it out. I didn't tell you to do that. At least the fourth time, I just raised my hand. And then the whole room went, yes. So there's a lot of patterns that we're running on all the time unconsciously that are fucking our lives up. Literally fucking your life up. I don't care. And I work with people who make literally have a net worth of over a billion dollars. And I work with people who are just starting off. And I could tell you, there's only so many patterns human beings have. There's only so many beliefs we have. There's only so many emotions we have. That's universal. The difference is, is the people who operate at the highest level have a different set of emotional states. We'll call them positive states. What are they? Positive states. And the people who aren't making progress in life tend to stay in negative states. Okay? We don't want to stay in negative states. Negative states are like stress, anxiety, insecurity, envy, jealousy, anger, right? frustration, all that shit. That's one thing. If I'm in these negative states, I'm focusing on the things in my life that suck. I'm focusing on the things I can't control, focusing on what I don't have. I'm focusing on where things are heading. Oh, I got a new bill. I'm not going to be able to afford it. Negative state. Oh, my relationship. My girlfriend's out at a bar. My boyfriend's out at a club. They're going to cheat on me, even though it didn't happen yet. I'm thinking that now I'm in a negative state which then causes negative actions, which then produce negative results, which then reinforce the negative beliefs in the negative state and then tells me, hey, I should continue to feel this way. Everything is a constant feedback loop. Everything is a constant feedback loop. What does that mean? It means we create reality. And I'll explain this to you. If I'm in a positive state, am I going to feel more excited and motivated? Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Am I going to be more charismatic? Yeah. Are people going to find me more attractive and want to talk to me? Yeah. Which then does what? Reinforces the fact that I should feel this way. Most people are taught to feel this way, and they have a highway in their brain. They have a fucking highway, like light speed to get into a negative state. And most people have a fucking dirt road to feeling amazing. It doesn't make sense. It's all backwards. So honestly, I mean, if I'm thinking logically here, 
Does anyone here uh, like disagree that you would rather feel really good and then while feeling really good, get really good results? Yeah. Okay, now think about a time in your life where maybe something bad happened or you had no control. Someone called you, something happened, and all of a sudden you felt this stress, this heaviness. What, what, what's that? I can't see. I can't, what is that? Is it important? Okay, can you bring it to me? Sorry, guys. Out of my control. <laughs> Oh, go back to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you sure? Yep. Okay. So anyone here ever had a time in their life where they think about something that happened and it's completely out of their control and all of a sudden they're feeling this heaviness in their heart, they're feeling kind of anxious, they're feeling down and they're like, fuck. And then you're on this downward spiral. Anyone here ever been on a downward spiral? Fuck yeah. Okay. How do you get out of a downward spiral? Now, a downward spiral really is telling you something. It's a compass, okay? Write this down. I invented this. You're not going to find this anywhere else. I call it an emotional compass, an emotional compass. This is the thing that has allowed me to produce literally tens of millions of dollars in my personal business, my personal life, literally buy my parents a house. I'm 23 years old. I do whatever the fuck I want. I've never done drugs before. I don't drink alcohol. I'm one of the most confident people you've ever seen. And I'm able to do all this by working a few hours a week. And that's how I change my fucking life. I literally control my life. I control everything I do by controlling my mind. So you can be a lot more productive and efficient. You can have all the friends you want. You can create the life you want if you change what's in here. Now, your emotional compass is going to be your biggest asset because it's going to tell you what direction you're heading in. Imagine you're in a car and the windshield is black. What the fuck is going to happen to that car? Well, odds are you're going to fucking die, okay? Imagine you're in a canyon and there's a cliff on both sides and your windshield's black out of nowhere and you're still stepping on the gas, what's going to happen? Yeah. Something bad's going to happen, or you're going to be the luckiest bastard who ever walked the earth. One of the two. Or you'll stop, and you'll be stuck. You won't know where to go. You'll be kind of torn between. I don't know what to do. I'm stuck. How many of us freeze in times of stress? Well, because we're going somewhere blind. So an emotional compass helps find direction. So there are three steps in order to create, manifest, or literally live the life you want. Step one, set a goal. I'm going to teach you how to set goals today. Write this down. We need to set goals. If someone tells me their goals, I could straight up tell you probably what's in your bank account. I could tell you what your love life looks like. I could do it just by looking at you, to be honest. But that's because I've been doing this for a while. right? And I could also tell you how often you go to the gym, what you fucking eat. If you're high, some of you are high right now. right? <laughs> right? I could tell if you drink a lot. I could see most of your, I could see whether people, and honestly, most people could see this too. Can you tell if someone lives in that state versus someone who lives in this state? Yeah. As a matter of fact, you could see it by the lines in their fucking face. Someone's angry, you could see lines here. If someone's sad, you see lines coming down here. If someone's happy, you'll see lines by their eyes. You'll see lines here. Sometimes it's a mask. But for the most part, you can literally look at somebody without even saying a word to them, and you could see what state they operate in most of the time because it's literally ingrained on their fucking face. And if it's ingrained on your face, you think it'll be ingrained in your life? Yeah. You think it'll be ingrained in your life? Yes. So we have to change that. Now, I want you guys to understand, instead of driving a car with nothing on the windshield, we need to get clear. If I decided, hey, guys, we're having a seminar tonight, and that's it, how many people would show up? Probably zero. <laughs> Probably. Hotels are. How many locations are venues in? Quite a bit. Odds are no one would show up. So what did you need to come here? You needed an address. You need a goal. If you want to create the life you want, you need to have a goal. Now, most people don't know how to set goals. They're like, I have a goal. I have a New Year's resolution. I'm going to do this, this, and this. And then they never get fucking shit in their life. Literally, their life stays the same or they're just like, well, I can't set that really big goal because it's unrealistic, which is also a crack of shit. It's a bunch of bullshit. Okay, who here thinks making a million dollars within the next three months is unrealistic? Great. You've been fed a bunch of shit. Someone literally took shit and shoved it in your fucking mouth and you ate it. And you're like, yum, 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 yum. Right? That's what fucking happened here. How many people here think you can't get really fucking confident overnight? Also, someone took shit, shoved it in your fucking mouth and said, eat this. And you're like, I like it. Mmm, yum, I like this shit. Right? How many people here like to be fat? Some people want to be fucking ripped or be in the best shape of their life. Well, it's all easy. Problem is, 
We're fed bullshit. And here's the biggest lie you've ever been told. It's not easy. So this is the step. Step one, set a goal. This is how you set a goal. You get fucking specific. I want to make this much money and keep this much money. Don't just say you want to make it because someone makes a million dollars because they spend a million on ads. Well, you didn't make shit. <laughs> I don't care what your Stripe account says. If it says you made a million dollars in revenue, but you didn't keep a dollar, if anything, you lost money, you didn't make anything. So I just want you guys to know, get specific. I want to make a million dollars and then date. By when? If any, anyone here puts something over 90 days, I swear to God, I'm going to sm smack you, okay? That's retarded. Do not set fucking goals a year in advance. Hey, uh, I want to go on a date with you in a year. Who the fuck's going to be motivated for that? I don't, oh yeah, my dream girl said she's going on a date with me in a year from now. <laughs> oh my God, Justin Bieber said he's going on a date with me in a year from now. It's, it's not, it, it, your brain is not going to operate in that way. You're not going to feel excited. You're not going to be motivated. What needs to happen is you need to set goals quickly. You need to see them. It needs to happen here, from here to here. I need to know that I can wake up in 30 days from now. My Step one, write a goal. Everyone, take your fucking phones out. Write this down. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to write down our goals. Take your phones out or a piece of paper. If you don't have a piece of paper and you came without notes, take your phone out. If I don't see someone looking at their phone, they either don't have a phone or they don't want to make more money or something. I, I don't know. Maybe they're still eating the shit. Maybe someone likes eating shit. Yum, yum. <laughs> well, this is the wrong seminar for you. We don't eat shit here. We get that shit out of you. We clean up the system. We clean up the mind. We make you live life on your terms. So your notes are out. This is how you're going to paint your picture. One, there are three areas in our life we all want to improve. Some of you might have some areas down. Some of you might not. But at the end of the day, you can always improve it. I don't care how amazing your relationship is and how many times you sleep with your girlfriend is. There are rooms you can, there are places you can improve it. Can we be happier? Can we be more productive? Can we be healthier? Can you ask yourself, are there areas in my life where I can improve? You don't want to get into a place where you get comfortable and you settle. Most people are like, ah, I reached my threshold. Oh, this was really shitty. Let me come here. I'm not really here yet, but I'm kind of in the middle. I made a little bit of money. My rent's good for a couple months. I got my weed. You know, I got laid two days ago. A bunch of guys hitting me up, right? If you're a girl, a lot of guys hitting me up and you're comfortable. Don't fucking do that. That's retarded. Literally, I don't care about the word there. It's, it's literally impeding your progress. It's literally retarding your progress. Impeding your results. Okay? Save that. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. I'm getting canceled. Okay. So, you need to write down your goals. Specific. How much money? How much time? How much weight am I going to lose? It's all numbers. Everything's math. We're doing the math right now. How much weight do I have to lose? How many calories do I have to eat per day? What kind of food do I have to eat per day? What are my macros? How many times do I have to hit the gym? When I'm at the gym, how much time do I want to spend at the gym? Most people don't account for time. Like, how much time am I going to spend doing these things? You're not going to be able to do it if you're not specific. Most people sit there, they're like, I don't know how. I don't know how. How many of us go, I want to make a million dollars, but how? And then what do you do? You go, I don't know. La, 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 la. I mean, if you spend literally, because this is what lazy people do. Lazy people go, I don't know. <laughs> Tell them, no, man, you're being unrealistic. And they'll go, but Marcel, I have a job. I have rent. I don't have time. I have this. And they give me, they, they spend all their time thinking about why they can't rather than taking a second, coming into a positive state. Be like, okay, how can I make this happen? Hmm. Let me think about it. What are ways to make it happen? Making a million dollars, by the way, is not that fucking hard. Most people are like, that's really hard. It's not that hard. You're like, well, you say that because you're you. Listen, if you saw me a few years ago, you'd be like, well, who the fuck is that guy? Okay, fat, insecure, chubby, couldn't communicate, really awkward, walk around like this. It, it takes time. You work on yourself. But I promise you, success can happen overnight. But what happens before that? A mindset shift. You change this, everything else changes first. Most people believe... That once you have everything you want out here, this will change in here. No. <laughs> it's not how it works. It's not how it works. You know, I have a really close friend. And this guy was like, I'm, this guy was like, look, when I graduate college, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to retire my parents. And he was just bragging about how that's when he's going to be really happy. Well, guess what? He graduated college in two years. Not just college. Like, uh, you know, Ivy League. So, 
prestigious, prestigious university, graduated in two years, has crazy job offers, quarter million a year because he's a genius, gets that job offer, goes, buys the car he wants, lives in this beautiful penthouse inside San Francisco, right? Living life. And a uh, friend killed himself. Was he happy? No. Now, then I have other friends who have nothing. They just have friends, but they have nothing else. They don't have money. They work like 50 hours a week to make ends meet, right? They're just supporting people, happiest people I've ever seen in my life. What's the difference? Difference is state. What emotion are they operating in? You look at your television, there's a default setting on the television. Default brightness, default setting, default volume. The second you open it, every TV in the world will have the same settings because that's how it was programmed. Now, unfortunately, you didn't all have the same programmers. You had different circumstances, different parents, different teachers, different environments. So your default state might be different. You might be emulating your behavior from your father, from your mother, from your caretaker, your uncle, your aunts, your teacher, some guy you looked up, your brother, right? You might be emulating those behaviors, those patterns, and now you're stuck. So what happens when we're emulating things? What are emotions? Emotions are strategies to achieve outcomes. They're not real. Emotions are strategies to achieve outcomes. This is very important. What does that mean? It means I don't feel emotion because I want to feel an emotion. I feel emotion because I'm trying to achieve a goal. Now, you have two options here today. You can get clear as fuck. And I mean clearer than you've ever been on anything in your life on what you want, or you can continue to go for what you've been programmed to go get. So you can have the goals that you don't want, or you could set new ones, change your state, change your habits, change your behavior, and attract the life you desire. Which one do we want? One or two? Which one do we want? Two. Good. So we're going to write down our goals now. Specifically, how much money do I want to make? Now, you have to put a timeline there. If you want to get in gear, you got to put a timeline there. What am I making in 30 days? What am I making in 60 days? What am I making in 90 days? Do we follow? Yes. yes. Yeah. Now that we have that, then we go, where's my social life going to be? Where's my confidence going to be? What am I going to do differently? How am I going to feel differently? Once we have that, it gets easier, right? Imagine I'm like, hey, guys, go make me food. Well, what do you want? I'm really picky. I don't eat anything. So what do you want? Yeah, just go make me food. You're going to be like, well, what the fuck does this guy eat? <laughs> yeah, can I make a meat? Is he not going to like... I'm like, if anything gluten tastes like shit, <laughs> you know? Like, what can I use? It's going to be really hard. You're not going to make the food. Same thing with your goals. Don't make your life hard. If you think you sat down about it, it means your emotional compass is off, which means you're defaulting to a negative state. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Yes. So right now we're going to get in groups. You're going to find a partner. We're going to do this for about two and a half to three minutes. Very easy, very quick. And you're going to share your goals. If you don't have a goal, sucks to suck. I don't know what to tell you. You, you didn't come to participate then. If, if you came to participate, you're going to get drastic change. If not, and your partner doesn't have a goal, don't waste your time. Find another partner. Join a group of three, okay? That's how we're going to do this today. So I, I know a lot of people here came to change. So again, I encourage you to share your goals with your partners. Uh, I hope everyone here is ready to do that. If you're not, I don't want the experience for someone here to be negative because someone else came to not change. So what we're going to do, and hopefully everyone does have a goal that's clear in their mind, you're going to tell them what your 30, 60, 90 day goals are, both in your wealth, your health, and your relationships. What do all my relationships to look like? What do I want my health to look like? What do I want my bank account to look like? Now, I don't care how you get there. That's not important yet. What's important is the outcome. Once we know the outcome, the rest is easy. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you share with your partner, be clear, be passionate. If you're not excited about the goal, it's not big enough. Make sense? If it's not, and anything, if anyone here, and I, I swear to God, if anyone here says, I only want to make 10K in three months or some, some stupid shit like that, please, <laughs> like, like, please, please call out your fucking partner, okay? We're not here to be small. Like, people fed this shit to you and told you to think small, all right? I've been on both sides of the aisle. My parents had everything in 2008, they lost everything. Homeless. Like, imagine waking up, and I remember this, I was 10 years old. I woke up, <laughs> I go, I piss. I go to brush my teeth, nothing comes on the sink. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I didn't say that in my head. I was a kid. I was like, oh, I go to turn on a light. Lights don't turn on. And I'm like, 
mom, <laughs> what's wrong with the sink? What's wrong with the lights? Now imagine being in a house where you can't flush the toilet, you can't shower, you can't do that after a few days. House smart starts to fucking smell like shit. One, two, you're living off candlelight, okay? I'd go shower at the local park. So you're living in this crazy mega mansion without power and electricity. And then a few months later, you're now moved out of it because it's now forced closed. And now you're homeless and you, you don't understand what happened. Well, I've been on both sides of the aisle and not until I changed, until I decided I'm gonna make a difference in my life, until I said, I'm not gonna fucking be broke. I'm not gonna be poor. Because when I was in high school and I graduated high school and I was, you know, my first couple of years of college, I dropped out of college. I couldn't even go with my friends to Cheesecake Factory. I couldn't afford gas in my car. I couldn't do any of that. And if I had the mindset I have now, I would have changed that in less than, less than a week. In less than a week, I would have changed my entire financial situation, probably in a few days. And I promise you, I would bet my fucking life on it. I bet my life that in under a week, I would have made at least 50 to 100K in under a week because I've done it so many fucking times. And I believe everyone here could do exactly what I've done. And I believe everyone here could do it even better than I've done. But this is the steps. And whether you believe me or not, that's your own internal stuff. But I can tell you, if I walk from point A to point B and you take the same steps as me, what's gonna happen? You're gonna get to the same outcome, correct? So I want you guys to understand, this isn't magic. Just don't continue to follow in the same footsteps you've been in. If you want things to change, you have to change, right? As Jim Rohn says, if you want things to get better, you have to get better. So this is step one. Let's get clear on what we want. And by the end of tonight, my goal is to show you how to transform your mindset so you could actually shape your life into what you've always wanted. All right? So please, everybody participate. If someone's feeling off, a little bit out of it, lift them up, make them feel better. That's what we're here to do. We're here to connect. We're here to bond, right? For those of you watching this live, maybe call your friend, share your goals, write it down, right? So Again, wealth, health, relationships, 30, 60, 90 day goals. By the end of this little five minute exercise, two and a half minutes each, you guys are passionate, you're excited, you shared your goals, you know exactly what you want, you're gonna feel fire under your ass and you're gonna be ready to go, okay? And that's the first step, building your compass in this direction, okay? So five minutes from now, find a partner, let's go. I'll let you guys know when the exercise is over, all right? Let's do it, quickly, find a partner.
Guys, we don't have a lot of time, so we got to move on. But, all right, guys, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. Let's go, guys, quickly. Let's have a seat. All right, you guys feeling good? Are we feeling good right now? Yeah! All right, good. So that, that lit you guys up a little bit, right? Did that light you guys up at all? Yes. Let me hear it. Yes. Are you guys feeling more excited? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Jesus. Listen, if I had to bet on that level of energy, whether or not you guys would get your goals, I would fucking say no. I would say <laughs> fuck no. Maybe this guy here, okay? Are you excited? Did, did your goals excite you right now to go get it? Yeah. Yeah. Say yes. Yeah. Say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I need everyone. To, come on, it's not even that late right now, right? Like, let's go. So, the next part of this is emotion, understanding emotion. So, there are three things that control our emotions. I need you guys to write this down. Three things. What I focus on. When I'm sad, I'm focused on my life sucking. Oh my God, things aren't working out for me, right? You start focusing on all of a sudden how your friends don't like you, you start to see the world in a different way. And all this horrible stuff. Whereas when you're happy, you're focused on everything going well, what you're going to accomplish. Like you're seeing the most positive aspects of your life. So focus. Second one is physiology, my actual body, right? Believe it or not, our mind and our body are connected. Your brain doesn't end here. Your brain ends down here, which means your nerves go all the way through your body. Your brain literally lives at the base of the spine. Right, all the way up to your eyes. Even your eyes are part of your brain. So our physiology, the way we breathe, the way we walk, the way we talk is directly correlated to how we feel. When you're anxious, I'm willing to bet my career on it, you're breathing shallow. When you're relaxed, you're breathing from your diaphragm, right, from the belly. Now, when you're confident, what do you do differently? Well, you're probably more comfortable, you're laid back, you're not tense in the body. When you get scared, what does the body do? Closes off. Everyone, for a second, get scared. Imagine you got scared, and you'll see this is universal. You go on YouTube, you see people getting scared. What do you see? They go, right? Like this artery from getting bitten by some saber-toothed tiger. They go like this. They, they tense up their shoulders. They'll close up their body to protect their ad, abdomen, right? I get scared. I go, I, I'm covering up what? What am I covering? <laughs> my, my reproductive organs. Women will cover up their stomach, right? The uterus. So you'll see all this happen when people are scared. It's universal. So our mind and our body are connected. So we have to learn how to actually be in touch with our body. When you're sad, everyone really quick, just lean forward, lean forward. And try and get motivated. Try and get motivated. Lean forward and try and get motivated. It's pretty hard. You can't. But you have, if you sit up and you stand up, everyone stand up really quick. Now try and get motivated. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! It's a lot easier, isn't it? So have a seat. I just want to show you the difference. And it's that fast. So not now, but when I'm done teaching you this, I'm going to show you how to get into a peak state. I love it because at the end of the day, why not get into that state and prime my brain into this level of thinking rather than this horrendous piece of shit level of thinking that we have been fed our whole lives, okay? So focus, physiology, and then self-talk, the words we tell ourselves. These three things control our emotional state. These three things control our emotional state, our focus, our physiology, and our self-talk. Now, if I change my focus, my physiology, my self-talk, I completely transform how I feel. Imagine this. You get up in the morning, and next to you is your lifelong soulmate partner, right? Someone that just invigorates you. And you think about them, and you, you play with their hair, you give them a kiss in the forehead, and you feel this warmth inside of you, and you, you, you literally tell yourself, how did I get so lucky? And you smile. Now, it might sound corny, but it, like, actually imagine that for a sec. And then you go, you pull up your laptop, you open up your bank account just because you like to do that, and <laughs> you have at least, at least $100 million in your bank account, at least, right? And you're looking at it from whatever your dream view is. You're looking out the glass, whether it's Malibu, and you see like the ocean, and you're seeing some city view in a penthouse, right? And you're looking, and you have this expensive furniture everywhere, you go look at your car keys, your dream car is, you know, literally right there. Huh. How does that feel? What if you could focus on that all the time? What if you could 
feel those feelings without actually creating that outcome yet. This is the formula to achieve anything you want. Feel what it's like to be there before you're there. Why? Well, your mind doesn't know the difference between what it's like to actually experience it in person versus what it's like to actually think it. If I could think about it clearly enough, I will feel the same emotions. Think about it. How many of us have gotten our heart broken or had a crush and it didn't work out or been flaked on and been upset? What are you really upset about? You didn't go on a date yet. It didn't happen yet. You didn't marry them yet. Nothing happened yet. And all of a sudden you're feeling disappointed and upset. Oh, you imagined it. You got addicted to the idea. And then all of a sudden reality didn't match. And now you feel pain. What? Ridiculous, right? Wow, I, every, my head hurt me. My, my own thoughts. Well, this is where pain comes from. It's, you expect one outcome, you get a completely different one. You're imagining what you want. Didn't work out. Boom, now I'm upset. What's the solution? Well, a solution is to realize you can still get what you want, but now you have to be willing to change the picture. So three steps I set to success. One, set a goal. Two, flexibility. Write it down. Flexibility, being flexible. And three, actually, step two is strategize, create a strategy. Step three is flexibility. I apologize. I just skipped the second one. But create a strategy and then flexibility. But what is step three? Because it's actually pretty important. Step two was imagine what it's like to feel that, create the strategy. The emotion is the strategy because emotion puts things in, right? Emotion puts things in. Emotion. Emotion puts things in motion. Thank you. So if we emotion puts things in motion and I'm feeling the same emotions I would if I were already there, what are my actions going to look like? Maybe not identical, but damn near whatever the fuck that person has. And all of a sudden, now, now what happens? Now I start to create that outcome. If I am an Olympic athlete and then all of a sudden I fell into a coma and I woke up and I was some obese fat person, like the fattest person you could ever think of. You think I'm going to wake up and stay fat if the last memory I had was training for the Olympics? No. no. I'm going to get up because I feel like an Olympic athlete internally. So what you feel like internally is directly correlated to how you act. How many of us have started a goal and then stopped or wanted to do something and not finished or said, I'm going to go to the gym and then ate the cheesecake in the fridge? Why does this happen? This doesn't happen consciously, this happens unconsciously, and it's because you're in a pattern. We're on autopilot 95% of the time. So if 95% of the time you're on autopilot, you're not even thinking your own thoughts, it's just a list, it's literally, it, your brain goes into the past and it goes, oh my God, look at all these patterns coming into my head, and then now it's on autopilot running through the past, running through the map of the past. Now if I continue to run what happened in the past, what's my future gonna look like? The past. Right, So your present life is a result of what happened in the past. Now, this is something I like to share with people because I think it's really, really valuable. How many of us have a moment, and show of hands, how many of us have a moment in life where we think, oh, what if I could go back and just change the thing? But we look at that moment and we go, huh. Well, at some point, that moment was in the present. And right now, you're in the present. And there'll be a moment in the future where one of two things can happen. I always say there's one of two outcomes. Obviously, there's an infinite amount of outcomes, but for the most part, there's one of two. There's what you want and what you don't want. Two outcomes. You'll look into the future and you'll have one of two emotions. Regret. What if I could go back to this moment right here? What would I have changed? Or, thank God I changed it because now I'm happy where I'm at. Right Now, people always say there's two pains in life, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. I don't even believe there's pain of discipline. I actually believe that when you're 100% congruent, in alignment, consciously and unconsciously, you get what you want like in the easiest way you could possibly imagine. How many of us think it's hard to just get up in the morning and do whatever the fuck we do every day? It's not, or maybe get up in the morning, but it's not hard for you to just do your regular routine, right? You think about your life, you look at your body. I could literally look at your body right now and I could tell you, do you go to the gym? Do you not go to the gym? Do you eat like shit? Do you not eat like shit? I could look at you and for the most part understand 
where most of you buy your clothing, right? Hugo Boss, right? A lot of people get Hugo Boss. A lot of people hear it. Whatever it is, I get, you know, you, you could see based on how someone carries himself, how they act, you know, maybe I can't see your bank account, but I can see a result of, for the most part, what your habits have created, right? We are a result of a consistent set of habits, a consistent set of programming, which we're running 95% of the time. If I told you guys, hey, 95% of the time, a plane doesn't reach the destination you're looking for, how many of you would want to hop on that plane? Well, fuck. You know, you'd be like, well, okay. Well, imagine this. You wake up and 95% of your thoughts are exactly the same. Now, maybe some of you are comfortable, but I actually don't believe that because human beings need progress. Progress is what makes us happy. It's in our fucking DNA. It's in our DNA to get more excited as we reach our goal. Right? If I go to grab something, am I slowing down or speeding up right before I grab it? I fucking press the gas because I'm in momentum. I'm in what? Momentum. Now, you're always in momentum. You look at a train. Some trains, if they're heavy enough, take miles to stop. Miles to stop. Now, you ask yourself, how can you stop a train quickly? Well, Superman doesn't exist, right? Real life Superman doesn't exist. Luckily, the brain doesn't need Superman to come in and stop the negative spiral you're in or the negative momentum you've gone down. Instead, you can immediately shift that negative momentum into positive momentum. You guys came to this event. That is already, is that a positive or negative action in your life? Positive. I would hope so. I would hope that you guys come out of here feeling completely incredible, right? So this is a positive action in your life. So is that positive or negative momentum? Positive. positive. So now I look at that and I go, okay, now I'm in positive momentum. What does that look like for me in the future? Well, if I keep this up, what will my life look like? So write this down. Consistency equals outcome. It is not what I do today that creates the outcome I'm looking for. It's what I do every day. It's committing myself to the future version of myself. It's what I could do today, what I could sacrifice today, what habits, what beliefs, what emotions can I sacrifice in this moment and replace so my future self will actually come to life. You are literally creating your future self in your present moment. You are creating the health you look for. What is the best cure for cancer? Preventing it. What is the best cure for being able to make your rent and not just that, but have completely complete financial freedom? Creating wealth today, not waiting till your bank account's at zero. Right? What's, what's the cure to having an amazing relationship with your friends or having an amazing friendship 10 years on the line? I know a lot of people who are older and they have no friends. And it's a lot harder to make friends when you get older. People have their own crowds. It's not like you're going to go out and meet a bunch of 50-year-olds or 60-year-olds. You know, they're not hanging out at clubs or bars, you know? So it's a lot harder when you get older, right? My parents are seven. My, mom's seven, my dad's 70. My mom's 61. They have a lot of friends, but they had way more friends when they were younger. And now they're at the age where some of their friends are dying. And I know that sounds morbid, but think about it. Do you want to go from where you are now and not like, like how many of you have high school friends that aren't around anymore? I, I talked to a few of my friends from high school. Very few, right? I, I talked to a few of my friends from two years ago. But you look at that and you go, okay, well, what changed? Well, you grew. You changed. And you're constantly evolving. And eventually you're going to reach a level where other people are at the same level. They're evolving at the same rate. You're going to attract the same type of crowd. Like you, The majority of people in this room have some interests. Everyone here wants to grow. So you'll start to make friends that want to come here. A lot of you guys came as a friend group. You wanted to get better as a friend group, right? Some of you were just dragged here and you're like, what the fuck did I get into? But you're here, right? So the reason I share this with you is because your future self will thank you that you're coming to something like this, working on your confidence and changing. There is one specific event. Anyone know what the butterfly effect is? Butterfly effect, it's a theory that states, if you were to go back in time as a time traveler and you were to do something such as even interact with a butterfly, let's say in prehistoric times, it could completely alter the, the course of history because that butterfly could have fed a bird and that bird, whatever, it doesn't matter. It could have just completely changed the course of history. Now, what is the butterfly effect of every decision you make? And most people don't think about that. So let's say you have two minutes left to live. 
How much would you give for an extra 60 seconds? Maybe not for your life, but for someone you love. Imagine you're madly in love with someone, or it's your kids, or your mom, or your friends. If you could have 60 more seconds with them, how much would you give for that time? Most people would think it's priceless. If you're not connected enough and you're not present enough, you'll be like, well, that doesn't really make any sense. It's only 60 seconds. Well, then that's fucking stupid. <laughs> you don't value time then. And I can tell you, if you don't value time, you're not going to enjoy your life. There's two things that happen here. The reason I bring this example up is because if you're going to value time when you don't have it, you should definitely value it while you do. Time is the most valuable resource on the planet, and most people are wasting their time. My entire life I have spent, literally my entire life, since kindergarten, I've, been, I, I've spent looking for shortcuts. How do I get from point A to point B in the shortest amount of time? In high school, this is how I do my homework. You do the first half, math homework. You do the second half, right? Hey, I'll do the, fir I'll do the first half, second half, half your shit, right? Or I just sit next to the smartest people in class and I'd copy them. <laughs> Right? I was efficient. I would never studied for a test. I didn't give a shit. I just wanted to make the most out of my house. So I was thinking about shortcuts. What was the shortcut to getting good at speaking? What was the shortcut to coaching? What was the shortcut to hypnosis? Besides learning from people and being around the best in the world, the shortcut was taking action. Age is a measure of experience. Most people look at age and they go, well, there's a lot more wisdom with age. Why? Because they've experienced more. You experience more when you take more action and there's this average that people take a certain amount of action over a certain amount of time and over 30, 40, 50 years, they acquire a certain amount of wisdom. So then you ask yourself, why are you listening to some 23-year-old kid speaking on stage? Well, I've just taken a lot of action. So I might have the same experience as someone who's maybe 30, 35 because I've just gone out and put myself out there and I've gone through a lot of things. The more you do in a short amount of time, the more experience you get. So what's the shortcut? Do more in less time. But don't do busy work. Do work that gets results. Results are the number one thing I prioritize. Results are the number one thing you need to prioritize. Is this going to get me a result? And I try to help my friends get into the state of thinking. Because I'll give you an example. One of my friends is like, oh, I need to change my website. It doesn't look good. I'm like, you're going to spend three hours tweaking your fucking piece of shit website. You're going to spend three hours tweaking your fucking piece of shit website when you could have hired someone for 50 bucks to do it for you and you could have spent that time now thinking about other ways to grow your business. What a stupid thought. Or, you know, I'll tell my friends, hey, come with me to a seminar. The seminar is 5K. And they're like, dude, that's $5,000. I'm like, what do you think you're going to learn at the seminar? Like, and I would tell my friends, I had no money. I would save $5,000 for events. I would go on credit cards. I'd do shit like this. And this is when I'm 19 and 20, when I didn't really have that much money, right? And I would save all this money so I could go learn from other people and take this action and be around other people. Because believe it or not, what kind of people pay for a $5,000 event? Usually people with quite a bit of money, not some 19 or 20 year old kid. So I go to these events, besides the fact that I would get my richest clients at these events, right, and it ended up working out, I also learned some of the best things I've ever, I've ever learned. I learned from speakers how to speak. I learned how they tell stories, how they feel. I would observe what is their physiology on stage? What are their mannerisms? What are they doing? How do they participate with the audience? What are they doing? And I would study it, right? And I would go to some events two, three, four times. And to be honest, I, I, don't, I was never diagnosed with it. But I probably have ADD or ADHD, right? Because I cannot stand looking at things. Like people bore me. Things bore me. So I look at other, like for example, other hypnotists, they go, they're like, sleep, relax, close your eyes, five, four. And you get really bored and you're like, dude, I can't do this. So everything I do is fast, 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 right? I call people up, sleep, fucking knock them out, right? They're on the fucking floor. Like everything I do is like, let's go, baby. Come on, fast. I tell, I literally... I'm on my sales team today because we actually, for the first day in the entire two months, didn't get any closes. Not their fault, unlucky day, but they don't know that. So I'm on the phone with them outside right now. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? What are you guys doing? Why didn't you tell me halfway through the fucking day that these leads, for example, aren't answering? What, what, I, I got on my, because I'm always on leadership. It's, it always falls on leadership, right? Falls on me because I was traveling all day. But I call my sales manager. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? The fuck is happening? You just wasted an entire fucking day where we could be changing lives. We could be enrolling people. Why, why is this happening? Right? And there's no feedback. And I look and I'm going through the group chats and I see there's no communication. There's no communication between marketing. There's no communication between my team. Sales team's not giving feedback. So I'm like, oh, look at what changed. One day I'm traveling. I'm literally traveling one day. I'm not on my phone one day. We didn't have a scrum call one day. Look at what happened. 
So that gives me data, right? So immediately adapt, immediately adapt. So now I have to implement a new strategy, a new system that makes my leadership way more reliable and accountable or they're going to lose their fucking job, right? But understanding this feedback and reflecting and acting quickly is what's going to get your results. So you have to value time. If you don't act quickly, you're wasting your fucking time. Most people, and I'm sure you've heard the saying, money loves, money loves speed. Money loves speed. So do, so do relationships. So does personal development. Life loves things that move. Now, most people sit at home and they're like, okay, I'm going to think about this. 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 I'm not going to act. Three years later, you're still sitting there fucking thinking about it. Right? You're like, I'm going to start a business, but it needs to be perfect. Right? So there's three kinds of people. You have someone who goes, I'm going to get this down. I'm going to study this. I'm going to get perfect. I'm going to get perfect. I'm going to get perfect before they put their stuff out there. Then you have the other guy who just doesn't give a shit. Right? And it's just a shark. And he's just like, I'm just going to put it out there. Whatever happens, happens. I don't care about clients or quality. And then you have the third person who does both. And this is the person who tends to succeed pretty, pretty highly. Now, these two both come from insecurity. One doesn't believe that their product's good enough. And the other one also does products good. Focus on it. But both of them have the same issue, except one's getting results, who doesn't deserve it. It's actually this person's moral obligation, their moral obligation to put their stuff out there or try because they have higher standards versus the person who doesn't have higher standards. And then all of a sudden you see like the snake oil salesman doing some shit. You don't want that, right? So I tell you this because most people are like, I'm going to do it. And then they don't take action. Action is the key to results, period. Now, sitting on the couch all day, is that an action? Yeah. But what result is that going to produce? So really quick, the next thing I want you to do now is I want you to reflect on your day-to-day -day routine. Now you might say, I don't have a routine. That's fucking horse shit. Of course you have a fucking routine. You do the same shit every day because your life looks the fucking same. Now whether your routine is different yesterday or tomorrow, you do the same shit. I don't care if you're traveling, you're doing the same thing. Whether you're eating at restaurants around three times a day, whether you're working out every, every week, whether you're on Instagram, look at your screen time on your phone. How much time do you spend on your phone? Every hour I spend on my phone, I made at least 10K. For every hour I'm on my phone, I'm making at least $10,000. How productive are you? I ask this, I, I literally ask myself this question because I, I see my friends, they're on TikTok and then they're on Instagram. I'm like, so what are you doing? You posting content? You watching, you watching to get ideas for content? No. So what are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know? And then when I invite them to come with me to the Maldives, for example, at the end of the week, they can't come. I don't have the money. I wonder why I don't have the money, right? Or then you ask them, hey, come with me to a fancy restaurant. I can't afford it. Okay, I'll pay for it. No, no, no. Why not? No. Let me just go on Instagram. What, what do you think eating at a fancy restaurant is going to do? Right? What do you think it's going to do? Probably change your mindset. Right? You put yourself inside a different area. You put yourself in a different environment. It's going to change your mindset. So the reason I share this with you is because if you start to surround yourself with the actions and you do the things that are important, right, to get better, they'll change your life. Now, a lot of people think, for instance, how many of us, and truthfully, I just want to know the answer. How many of us think $5,000 is a lot of money? Be honest. Raise your hand. Hi. So it's okay. You don't have to be shy. It's not, don't, don't think I'm judging you. I used to not be able to ask for 150 bucks. Raise your hand. I, I, I want to see. How many of us thinks 20K is a lot of money? Raise your hand. Okay. How about 100K? Raise your hand. Hi. Okay. How about a million dollars? Who thinks a million dollars is a lot of money? Okay, so majority of the room. So the reason I ask this question is because your relationship with money is going to be directly correlated to how much money you make. Now, we hear things all the time. Making money is hard. Making, if you make a lot of money, you're greedy. You won't have time, right? Because you're projecting what? We're projecting our minimum wage job or our current salary or whatever we're doing onto the future. So we're basing our old reality, our old map, which is taking us in the wrong direction into the future. So we're taking our minimum wage job, for instance, and we're going, okay, that means I have to work 300 hours to double my income. What are you talking about? You would not be working that fucking job if you were making millions of dollars. Does this make sense? Yes. So we have to sacrifice this nonsense thought that the old pattern, the old habits, the old things we were doing are gonna get us the results we want in the future. What you did in the past isn't gonna get you what you want in the future. Now, are there things that have progressed you? Yes. Here, everything is simple. I always say success is simple. If you want to get better results, do more of what works. Is what you're doing today working? Probably do more of this and less of smoking weed, drinking alcohol. You're going out and partying. Listen, I party too. I like to have fun. But I'll have fun if I know I have nothing the next morning. 
I'll have fun by inviting my friends to my house. I'll have fun by putting myself out there, but then going home when I should go home. I'm disciplined in that way because it's what you value. Now, human beings go to the path of least resistance. If we knew that making money was easy, we would do it. But at some level, some of you who make some amount of money or even more money or less money, whatever you're doing, you think is easy. You're doing it because you think it's easy. So your goals, if you associate whatever it is you want your goals to easy, right? And some of you might be like, well, I work really hard. I run a marathon. Yeah, fine. That might be physically draining, but to you, it's easy, right? It's easy to you. It's also easy to sit down and eat a cheeseburger, right? If you believe it's easy, you'll take action. So I always like to simplify. If you don't think it's simple, you're not going to get the results you're looking for. So here is what I encourage you all to do. How can I simply and easily make what I want crystal clear? How can I simply and easily make what I want crystal clear? How do I get what I want? One, think about it. The more you think about it, the easier it gets because you're going to start the solution. Also, it's always the simplest solution. The problem people have is they don't have the confidence. So when they're lower in confidence, when they're lower in confidence, they won't go from point A to point B. They're going to zigzag and beat around the bush because they're not good enough. No one's going to buy this. No one's going to do this. I was talking to my friend the other day, and I'm telling him, and it's like he's never been to any of my seminars, okay? And I'm telling him, I'm like, hey, listen, come with me to this country club. You'll be able to network with people and get some clients. And he goes, no, but I'm not you. They're not going to get my stuff. They don't, they, you know, I'm just starting off. I'm like, are you on fucking crack, bro? Like, where the fuck have you been the entire time you've been my fucking friend? Like, where do you think I got clients before? I'd fucking go up to random people at the mall. I'd go up to random, like, what are you talking about? He's like, no, no, that's not true. You, you don't do that. I'm like, okay, <laughs> don't make money. Whatever you fucking want, bro. Whatever you want, don't make money because of the lack of confidence. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, and it's not like he didn't see me walk up to random people. He was there when my fucking dogs died. I two, I'll tell a story tomorrow, but I had two dogs that died in the same night. I was making $350 a week. I couldn't even afford uh, anything more. I didn't know how to ask for money. And then I went and made 40K overnight. I'll tell a story tomorrow. But you know the reason I share this story with you now is so you understand if I could go up to random people at bars, clubs, tell them to go outside, meet me in the back of the room right now, right? To, and, and they would. Anyone could do it. It's not hard. Obviously, that's not the easiest way to make money. And I know that's not the most effective way to make money now. However, that's what I used to do because I would just throw shit at the wall and whatever stuck, stuck, you know? Now, I share this with you guys because at first, you're going to come up with some harder ideas and they may produce results, but that's hard. It's hard to go into a restaurant, disturb everyone, disturb their business, disturb their dining experience and tell them to come meet you outside. That's not... <laughs> that's not really a, a thing I recommend everyone do, right? But you're turning a seminar into a restaurant. It's like, hey, everyone, you know, meet me outside. I'm going to change your life. And then, like, someone, like, like in a zombie-like state goes, what'd you say? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, you know, I want me to change your life? How? You know, it's, it's, it's not realistic. So there's obviously shortcuts and there are shortcuts. The problem is, you know, we overcomplicate things. Anything you think is hard is not hard. How many of us are like, oh, hypnotizing someone would be really hard? It's not. You could learn in eight minutes, literally in eight minutes on my YouTube channel. For those of you on YouTube, it's there, right? How to hypnotize someone, eight minutes. I teach you a tutorial. I'll literally, everything that took me years to learn, I teach in eight minutes. Eight minutes of everything you need to know. Every, I literally took two years to learn. I taught in eight minutes you understand it so making money how do you make money ask for more money how do you get more clients there we go no worries you're good you're good i was like wait is that me <laughs> at first i'm like am i echoing you're good so now the reason i ask you guys this question is a lot of people go more so how do i make more money well let's let's be simple one you, you charge more money two you get more sales so you either get more clients or one you charge more a lot more that's how you make more money. Now, well, how do I get more clients? Well, get better at marketing. Get better at getting in front of people. Well, how do I get better at marketing? Hire someone who's good at marketing. It's not that hard. You on your own can go sell a bunch of people, probably make $20,000, $40,000 a month. I don't care what you do. You could probably make at least that. doesn't matter what you're selling. 
I have a very close friend of mine who was at Summit last year, which is a seminar starts tomorrow, saw me speak. We're friends now. He was selling masks outside of the back of his car in Walmart at the beginning of the pandemic. We went to Bahamas about three weeks ago, and he just made $1.5 million just that week. Like, he's constant, like, he's made multiple eight figures in one year. Talked about making a million dollars in a month. Well, within 60 days from selling masks in the back of his car, he made his first million dollars. It's not that hard. He just sat there, thought about it, said, I'm going to go fucking big. I'm going to go do it. Found random emails from hospitals, sent cold emails out, would literally dig the internet for emails for the hospital, contact support, all this stuff. Finally got good at it. Hundreds and hundreds of emails later, finally got a reply, got a phone call. First client, $200,000 contract. Boom. Next client. Boom. 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 Found suppliers. Fucked up their first deal because supplier wasn't good as an example, right? Then all of a sudden they found reliable suppliers. And it just built up. And here we are a year later and in like three days in the Bahamas off a couple emails and a one-hour phone call, $1.5 million. So it's not hard. I just want you guys the time around the right people, you're not around the right environment, you're not thinking the right thoughts, you're never going to come up with these answers, you're never going to come up with these solutions. You're going to be limited. You understand this? Yes? yes? So I want you guys now to understand that the shortcut to success is a few things. One, take action. Two, have the right mindset so you can actually take the action. And three, learn from people, be around people that can help you get there faster. Now that sounds stupid and everyone's like, well, yeah. You know, of course, the mentor is going to tell people to get mentored. Well, what do you think I do? Like, <laughs> I get mentored all the time. You know where I learned hypnosis? I learned hypnosis. One, I went to school for it, dropped out of it, didn't like that school. Didn't, I, I didn't drop out of it, finished it, but I didn't really show up or commit to that. Didn't think the school was teaching me shit. I look at someone called Darren Brown, and I'm like, damn, this guy's really good. Found out most of what he does isn't even hypnosis. It's just magic, mentalism. It's, not, it's a trick. It's not real. I didn't know that though, because I didn't have the knowledge. So I would try to attempt the really difficult things he did that weren't even hypnosis, and I actually found ways to do that, which made me way better, because I thought it was possible, right? So that's the second key here, is believe it's possible, and you'll find a solution. And then, eventually, because I got so good, I actually started reaching out to people who, for example, train intelligence agencies. If you guys don't know what that is, CIA is an intelligence agency, and my six is an intelligence agency, FBI is an intelligence agency, so one of my close friends trains them, and not only is he one of my close friends, he literally goes and he's like, hey, now who do you think I learned from, right? He wants to teach me. So not only, not only he was teaching me before, but now we're friends, and we just did a seminar at my house last weekend to give you guys an example. Right? So I've, I've learned from the best in the world, and it took a lot of skill, a lot of time, a lot of practice. Here's the shortcut. Get good at networking, get good at socializing, and all of a sudden... You're going to have a network of people who can teach you everything you want in a matter of hours. Hours. If someone knows what they're doing, you'll learn it in a couple hours. If someone doesn't know what they're doing, it might take you more time. However, however, what I want you guys to understand is the more action you take, the faster you learn. What you'll sit down and write down today for six months will be less effective than an hour of going out and actually implementing it. You'll learn more in an hour of implementing it than you will in six months of practicing it. In writing and thinking about it. Does that make sense? Yes. So, uh, you know, I don't benefit from this. I don't make any money off Summit. It's not my seminar. I'm just speaking at it. Tomorrow, seminar. It's a, how many days? Four days? Four days. It's a four day seminar. I'm speaking for six hours. Now, I charge people $50,000 a session to be hypnotized by me. Tomorrow, I'm gonna be hypnotizing the entire room. I'm gonna hypnotize them to be more confident to completely change the limiting beliefs around money, to sit in positive emotions, not negative ones, and I'm gonna be changing a lot of lives. Like I said, that guy who was at the seminar a year ago, he literally told me that the hypnosis session we did a year ago, which was significantly less effective than the one we're gonna to do tomorrow, changed his life. I had another client who actually became a client after that event, right, went from around a million dollar net worth to an $80 million net worth in one year, in one year. So hypnosis is really powerful for one reason. Even if you've never heard about it or you've never done it, it literally rewires the brain in a different way. You're creating new neural pathways. You're changing the way you think. You're changing the way you feel. Because from age zero to eight, your brain is in a brainwave state called theta. Theta is hypnosis. Theta is hypnosis. So in other words, you were programmed in hypnosis so we can be reprogrammed in hypnosis. Make sense? Yes. 
So that's just a long story short. So tomorrow from 4.30 to around 10.30, I'm going to be speaking. I will be hypnotizing the room. I'm going to be changing people's fucking lives. You're going to see me doing interventions. I'm going to call people up on stage. I'm going to be coaching them the same way I would if I had a one-on-one -on -one client. We're going to do it in an immersive environment. So uh, there's not that many spots left. Uh, probably barely not. If everyone in the room wanted to come up, it probably wouldn't fit because you see the room here <laughs> and there's a lot of people. People flying in from Europe, all over the world. Normally... We do summit in Las Vegas, but we wanted to support people here in Texas and in Florida because we like what the government's doing. We like the fact that they're giving our freedom. We like the fact that there's no fucking lockdowns here. So give us a round of applause for that, right? Right? So we're all about that. And it's going to be a party all fucking weekend, literally all weekend. The tools we're going to be teaching, I mean, I'm not done at all today, but you're going to see the level of content that I've taught here versus what's going to be there tomorrow completely different levels. So I'm going to teach you how to literally sit across from someone in a different restaurant and already be in rapport with them. So when you go up to them, you're already connected to them. I'm going to teach you how to communicate to people to get them to immediately connect to you, not just connect to you, see value in you, want to get to know you. And you'll find that I don't, I don't care if they're a billionaire. Or celebrity. I've gotten my sense, some of the biggest names in Hollywood, some of the biggest, actually the biggest names on YouTube, all my clients, all of them. How did I do it? using these exact strategies. I'm going to teach you how I've gone up to random people who I know have a lot of money, create investors, literally, in, in like an hour, they became investors, boom. And then all of a sudden, I use other people's money to make me a lot of money, right? So you don't even need money. You just need these skills, and I'm going to teach these skills tomorrow. Now, like I said, normal seminars, 5 to 10K. Reason is I'm teaching you some of the most advanced persuasion and influence skills in the world. I'm teaching you how to transform your mindset, and I'm doing it for you tomorrow. So this is how you do it. We're having the seminar. Tickets are still on sale here today, tonight. If you want to change your life this weekend, it's 197. So that's Summit. That's literally a joke. I hope everyone understands that that is literally a joke of a cost for a four-day event. It's a four-day seminar, 200 bucks. My fucking lunch today costs less. I mean, it costs less than my lunch today. So I'm just saying it's a joke, 200 bucks, not that much money. I promise you, if you save 200 bucks every month for the rest of your life, you still won't be able to buy jack shit with it. But what you will be able to do with this 200 bucks is learn things, transform your life, and at worst comes to worst, you lost 200 bucks, right? So just out of curiosity, how many of us are already going? Raise your hand. Okay. Put your hands down. Who is not going? Just put your hands up, honest. Okay. For those of you who are not going but want to go, keep your hands up. Those of you not going but want to go, put your hands up. Okay. Stand up. Stand up. If you want to come to this, stand up. Okay, go there, raise your hand. Look at those beautiful men in the background. They're waving, they're nice, they don't bite. Go there, they'll take care of you guys. So we're gonna do this really quickly. It's literally a $200 ticket. You'll go sign up right now uh, and they'll take care of you guys for this weekend. Now, you know, you might be asking yourself, well, what else am I gonna get this weekend? Well, you're not just getting me as a speaker. You're getting world-class speakers. People have been doing this for decades, two decades. For example, Owen will show up here later. Julian will show up here later. They will literally be here all weekend transforming and changing lives. You guys are going to find this is probably one of the most transformative experiences in the world. It's not like one of those seminars where you just fluff things up. You will get actual tangible tools, skills. Like I said, you will learn. You'll be able to walk away with instantaneously to transform your life. So if there's anyone else who's still thinking about it or on the fence, just raise your hand. Anyone has any questions about it? So no one else here wants to go? That is not going. Last chance. No? For sure? Good. So we're going to break out into an exercise really quick, and this is it. We already got our goals, correct? Sure. Now I want you guys to, it's going to take 10 minutes because you're going to walk through your day to day here. I want you guys to walk through emotional routine. What am I feeling in my day to day? Right? Like my day to day routine, what am I feeling? Am I feeling happy? Am I feeling sad? Am I stressed? What am I feeling? So when I wake up, what am I feeling? Okay. Up until lunch, what am I feeling? On average, try and remember it. If you can't connect to your body or your feelings, I don't give a fuck. Try and figure it out. Okay. It just means you're not thinking hard enough. There's no such thing as not feeling in your body. Everything you do is a feeling. Even moving your hands, saying I can't feel anything is a fucking feeling. <laughs> okay? Everything's a feeling. So you're going to go through this routine, all right? You're going to go through the day just from morning to night. could be today. And I want you to write down what your emotions are. And then categorize them in either a negative or a positive column. And look and see, is it 50-50? Is it 80% negative? Is it 80% you know, positive? And it's not about looking cool here. It's about being honest with yourself. I want you to diagnose, diagnose where your mindset's at because this is what's going to help you change. I used to be there 90% of the time. So where do you think my results were 90% of the time? Negative. 
Now I'm here 95% of the time, and the second something negative happens to me, like I'm here, what do you think I do? I get out of it. I get out of it. A downward spiral is just you not being aware that you're here. That's what a downward spiral is. So I want you to self-reflect on your day today. You're gonna to find a partner, you're gonna share it. You're gonna write it down. Then you're gonna categorize it. Even have your partner. If your partner, if you think what they're telling you is a positive state or a negative state and they're putting it in a positive state, call them out. You're here to help each other, right? We're doing this as a group. Everyone makes sense, does this make sense to everyone? So this morning I woke up, I was groggy. I was kind of lazy, I didn't feel good. Positive or negative? Negative. 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 When I got up to eat breakfast, I was like, oh, I should have some health, something healthy but I really crave donuts. Positive emotion, negative action, right? So you could put the positive emotion there, but also flag it and be like, That's, there's a negative outcome, okay? Make sense? Just become aware of what's happening here, all right? And then at the end of this, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna change it, okay? Find a partner 10 minutes from now, go. Online, you can do this for yourself. Just be honest. All right, 10 minutes from now. Find a partner quickly, let's go.
that. Okay, how many, how many of us got that? Raise your hand. How many of us wrote that down? We had enough time to go over it. Shouldn't have taken that long. Like, I don't want you to be like, from 11 to 11.15, I was feeling really shit. Like, just generically, what we're feeling on average, okay? How many of us were majority negative? Honest. Interesting, huh? How many of us were majority positive? Okay. How many of us were extremely positive? How many of us were extremely negative? Good to know. So, now we reflect on that, and now you're aware. So, I want to teach you how to get out of that 95% autopilot. Right, where our brain's running off the past. Now, imagine this. I give you a map from, that, from 1776. How good is that map going to be today? <laughs> probably not good at all. It's probably just horseshit, right? It's just a waste of fucking time. You're going to read this map and you're going to be like, where the fuck am I going? This was not on the map, <laughs> right? I don't understand this. So we need to update our map. Now, a lot of us have a map, but the map is shit. The map is from the past. It doesn't fucking make sense. And then we believe that the past is the future, and we project that, and we're like, oh, my God. Right? Now, there are some things in our DNA. We're projecting things in our DNA. For example, how many of us believe that fear of dying is something you're born with? Good. You should believe that because it is. It is something you're born with. Now, how many of us believe that getting cheated on is something you're born with? It's not. It's not. Believe it or not, we actually used to do group shit, um, you know, in caves. You know, cave, cave people, yep, we shared. we shared everything. Our kids grew up together. Our partners, you know, higher up in the hierarchy, the more you got to have fun. And that's just how things rolled. Uh, so none of your ancestors were virgins. That's a fact. And... Everyone had some fun. And if you look at ancient Rome, Sparta, all that, some of them were homosexual, some of them were heterosexual. You know, they, it was just a party, like, kind of like bonobos. Bonobos are a specific species of primates. And yeah, like human beings, we are disgusting fucking animals. We just fuck everything. That's how HIV came to be. Someone fucked a gorilla. No joke. That's how it happened. So you look at that and you go, well, okay. So we have this primal self, right? This mammalian brain, not lizard brain, mammalian brain, your limbic system. And then we have the, you know, lizard brain, your fight or flight, where your amygdala, you know, kicks in and puts you in stress and anxiety. Now, when these primal aspects kick in, you cannot be present, right? Something that evolved later on in the brain is the prefrontal cortex that allows us to be in the moment. Allows us to think right now, right here, be in the moment, be present. Now, how do we get present and why is that beneficial? I'll tell you exactly why it's beneficial. If someone goes, fuck you, that's already in the past. Present again, I feel fucking good, right? We react based on our old map. Something happens, we look to the past, and now we implement a strategy. We're running a script, we're running a program, and then we try to use what we've done in the future. Future cannot equal the past. If it did, we'd still be living in caves. So it does not equal the past. However, if you want your life to drastically change and you took a map and you replaced your map, your programming with a map that made you a million dollars in the next 90 days, with a map that got you extremely confident, with a map that allowed you to just transform everything you've ever done, what's your future going to look like? Well, it's going to look like what the map takes you to. So we have to understand how do we change our map and not let the past dictate our future. Your brain is in the past. Your brain is operating off of a set of memories that are ingrained into your very nervous system. It is operating off of what happened to you. I'll give you an example. Anyone here ever been cheated on? Okay, raise your hand high. Okay, if you've been cheated on and you get into a relationship, now what happens? My, you know, I'm texting my girlfriend or my boyfriend. And normally they reply every two minutes and they're out with their friends today. I didn't like that, but they're out with their friends today. Now, what the fuck? It's been four minutes and 45 seconds. You call your friend. Hey, bro, what do you think is going on? Hey, she hasn't replied in four minutes, 45 seconds. What the fuck is happening here? Or you call your girlfriend. You're like, hey, is this son of a bitch cheating on me? Like, what, what the fuck? You know? And then next thing you know, they call you back. They're on FaceTime. Hey, I'm with my friends. What's up? You know? And you're like, oh, okay, they're nice. And then you text them, well, text me more often. Okay, no problem. My phone's about to die. What? Hang up. Text, nothing, nothing, nothing. Now you sit there and you're looping in your head. You go, are they fucking cheating? So you got to 
go catch them. <laughs> so you, you find them in a club, uh, literally just laughing with their guy friends or their girlfriends. And they're like, what are you doing here? And you're like, ah, I'm not crazy. I'm not weird, right? And uh, you look like a fucking weirdo. Or inversely, you go and they're actually fucking banging someone else and you're like, holy shit, my intuition's good. No, you're fucking pickers off. You're picking the wrong people. You're picking people who will do that to you in order to continue to reaffirm that you're right. Ironically, we'd rather be right than change our life. It's fucked up. I'd rather be right that my partner will cheat on me than find a good partner. I'd rather be right that they're going to reject me than find someone or become better to where they don't reject me, right? I, I'd rather be right because your brain wants to know that the map it has is good. Because that map has allowed you to fulfill your number one instinct. Your number one need, survive. Your map allowed you to survive. I've survived up until now. Maybe I wasn't happy, but I survived. You weren't programmed to be happy. You were programmed to survive. Therefore, whatever has allowed you to survive up until right now is what your brain will continue to reference. This is the problem. The problem is we're not living in caves. We're not fucking hunting animals. We're not nomads. And there's no saber-toothed tiger coming to bite my fucking neck unless you're in like Dubai or Saudi Arabia or some shit. All right? Then you got fucking tigers on the beach running around. And you're like, what the fuck is that? Right? You ever see those videos? I swear, I have a pet monkey, which is pretty crazy. But, you know, I, I could only imagine going to Malibu and there's a fucking tiger in the... Dude, I'm out. <laughs> That's not for me. Okay? Now, I'm not going to be like, I'm facing my fear. I'm a fucking man. That's not for me. Right? So I highly don't encourage you guys to do stupid shit and be like Marcel said. Be present. Face your fucking fears. Go for what makes you uncomfortable. That's not what I'm saying. Okay? I'm telling you, do things rationally and logically. Don't put yourself in harm's way. So we look at the past and we're like, well, this has happened to us. This has hurt us. This has done these things to us. Therefore, I now have to be a certain way so this doesn't happen again. But ironically, write this down. Fear creates fear. I get in a car accident, scared of driving. I get in my car. What state am I in? Positive or negative state? Negative. negative state. Now, if I'm in a negative state, I'm anxious. I'm driving anxious. Are my decisions or thinking, is it going to be as clear as it would be if I was completely calm and relaxed? No. Fuck no, it won't. Everything's clouded. My judgment's clouded. My reaction time is clouded. Now I get in an accident. See? It's not safe to drive. Maybe it's not, but I can guarantee you that I'd rather get in the fucking car with someone who's very relaxed than someone who's completely scared shitless. Similarly, you get into a relationship and you're scared someone's going to cheat. You're in a negative state. You start fucking pushing them away by being anxious, crazy, annoying, bitchy, a dick, controlling. Now they're like, what the fuck is happening? This was not, this is not in the brochure. You know, I did not see this. And then they go do it. Or they leave you and you're like, I was right. Were you right or did you make that happen? Most of the time you made it happen. Or maybe you didn't make it happen, but you didn't have boundaries, you didn't have standards, you didn't do anything, and you, create, you allowed that to happen. The same person who cheated on you might be loyal to someone else. Same, the same guy who didn't buy your service or your product will go buy the next guy's. Because you didn't believe that it was worth it. Because you carried yourself in a different way. Because you acted, you spoke, you talked in a different way. Because you're using an outdated map. So we need to update the map. And the only way to update the map, well, there's a few ways. One, I can hypnotize you. That makes it easy. You don't have to worry about it. Two, you show up to summit, I hypnotize you, which most of you are coming to. You'll have a good time. Right? So one and two, hypnosis from someone. Hypnosis from me, better. Or get present. Get fucking present. What do we have to do? So when does change happen? Yeah. Okay, listen, I, I don't know how many times I have to repeat myself, but obviously we keep going back to some old maps. So let's update the map now so we don't have to do this again. What did I say at the beginning about participation? Everyone, Everyone fucking participate. So when does change happen? Now. Thank you. So if change happens now, we have to update our map when? Now. So this is how we do it. We think to ourselves and we go, oh, wait, I'm feeling really shitty right now. I'm thinking my friends or my boyfriend's going to cheat on me. Well, do I want to feel that right now? If this was my last 60 fucking seconds on earth, would I want to be feeling this feeling? If the answer to that is no, 
is the wrong feeling. You know, fuck the map. Fuck the future. I could give less of a fuck if they're doing it. Right now, are they around me? Are they in my life? Are they here? No. In the present moment, this is reality. Whatever is in my life right now, right here in front of me, is my reality. You are in my reality. You are in my reality. You all are in my current reality. This stage is what I'm fucking stepping on. This is my reality. Not some nonsense far away from me. So I'm not going to think about that. I'm going to think about this. And then I ask myself, how do I want to feel right now? And this takes a massive level of emotional intelligence. I call this mindset mastery. You're literally mastering your mind. Because it takes a lot of practice to be able to let go of those maps, those emotions, those thoughts, those feelings, to come into the present and not let that affect you. So what does that look like? I'll tell you. It looks like me feeling bad, and then I go, okay, why am I feeling this feeling? Remember what I said earlier? I said emotions are a strategy to achieve an outcome. So if I'm feeling an emotion, I'm trying to achieve a specific outcome, which means if I feel like shit, what am I trying to do? If I'm feeling scared, what am I trying to do? Every emotion does one of two things. It goes towards or away from things. It goes towards or away from things. Emotions of pleasure bring me towards things. Emotions of pain bring me away from things. Do we follow? So, fear is a towards or away emotion. Away. Pleasure, love, is a towards emotion. If I fear making money, if I fear going to the gym because it's going to be hard, if I associate anything negative to what I fucking want, will I get it? No. So we have to become present because the past, just because I've associated something negative in the past because I might have heard a belief from my parents, from my teachers, from mentors, from TV, it doesn't mean I need to continue to have that shit in my head. That's bullshit. So fuck the past. Everyone say it. Fuck the past. Fuck the past. Thank you. And when does change happen? Now. So right now, we're going to create a desirable future where we can completely control what we want. We can live life on our terms, our standard, and actually change. This is how you do it. You understand emotions are strategies. In other words, everything is a towards or away emotion. Everything is a towards or away strategy. The key to success isn't what you do in writing. It's not what you do in like, okay, my business, I'm going to do this, this, and this. No, it's how you feel. Your mind will do the rest. How many of you think I fucking come up here and I prepare for any speech? I've never prepared for a seminar in my fucking life. I just come up. I get in the right emotional state and it comes out of my fucking mouth. Whatever comes out of my mouth comes out of my mouth. It is what it is. My intention is to change lives. I riff it. It's, it is what it is. I could speak from now till tomorrow till day after and I'll be perfectly fine. If anything, the more time I speak, the better I get. Now, the reason I share this with you is because most people spend too much time thinking logically. Logic is not going to get you to where you want to go. It never has. It never will. Getting present is really just you selecting which programs you want to run instead of letting your mind select them for you. I'll repeat that. Getting present to the moment is deciding which programs you want to run instead of letting your mind decide which ones to run for you. So what does that look like? Well, if I always react with anger when I'm in a conversation, well, maybe this time... I'm not going to do that. I feel angry. <sighs> Look, this really upset me. Please don't do it again. Is that already improvement? Fuck yeah, it's improvement. Versus, fuck you, why the fuck did you do that? It's not going to work. So effective communication. One comes from changing the strategy. So three steps. One, set a goal. Two, form a strategy. Decide the emotion you want to feel. If you don't know which emotion you want to feel, this is how you create the strategy. You let the brain do it for you. If I was already there, if I was that person, if I was as wealthy, as healthy, and had the love that I've always wanted, the relationships I've always desired, how would I feel now? That is the strategy. Your brain will formulate it. You try it out. Hey, I'm talking to you. Buy my stuff. No? Okay, how about now? Hey, I'm just kidding. Come here. Change the strategy. Cracking jokes. Come next to him. Talk to him. Touch him. Okay. All right, cool. Come on. Let's do it. All right. He does it. Boom. I was flexible. I changed. I didn't react. I was flexible enough. I still kept my eyes on the goal and I made it happen. That is what success is. That is how you achieve your goals. You don't get stuck in one emotion. Most people aren't flexible. They're not emotionally intelligent. They don't have 
mindset master. So what that is, I, something's not working for me, then what? I get more mad, and then more mad, and then more mad, and nothing changes. Versus getting fucking mad, this isn't working, time to change. Hey, listen, I'm sorry, I lost my temper, what's going on? Didn't work, change it again. Emotional flexibility. Flexibility, period. And when should you be flexible? Now. 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 Guys, I swear to God, if we don't fucking participate, I'm going to make... Be flexible. <laughs> when does change happen? Now. Thank you. Good. When? Now. See how that works? So, we're going to do an exercise. You guys are going to like this exercise. It's a lot of fun. You guys are going to start talking to someone. Your goal is to get them to pick their fucking nose. Okay? So, really quick, pick your nose. That was easy. Pick your nose. Pick your nose. I may or may not give you a free ticket if you pick your nose. I might give you two free tickets. What's your favorite food? Fine, don't pick your nose. I'm moving on to the next person. Okay, he doesn't want to participate. Fuck it. You gonna pick your nose? Okay, got him to pick his nose. See? <laughs> right? Flexibility, though. You get it? I'm kidding. You're good. Right? I just want to show you, though. Right? It's, it's changing it up. So your goal is to get someone to pick their nose. Don't be too much of a dick, but also don't be easy. Don't just let them put it in, okay? No one likes an easy, no one likes an easy way in, okay? We want, to, we want to create a little bit of a challenge here. Right? Imagine, hey, pick your fucking nose for me. Pick it. <laughs> Nobody wants that. But it's like, hey, pick your nose. <laughs> right? And maybe you might get more success with that. Now, the reason I say something so random is because how often do you go ask someone to pick their fucking nose from the past? That's not something, it's not in your map. It's not in your map. So you're going to have to create a new formula. And you're going to allow yourself to think. I want you to think what's the best communicator? What's the best emotion you feel? And if you say, fuck you, I'm not picking my nose. You're like, you know what? Let's do it together. <laughs> right? I get it. Look, it might be a little bit difficult for you. Don't worry about it. Right? Just being friendly, smiling might help get past that kind of resistance. But you guys understand emotional flexibility is key. One, when problems arise. Two, when you don't want to let the past dictate your life. And three, if you want to increase your charm, increase your level of attraction to people intimately in business settings, in friendships, Everything you do is going to be dependent on your emotional state. Nobody likes someone who sits there and feels sorry for themselves. Nobody likes someone who sits there and cries all day long. I don't give a fuck how much sympathy and attention you get. Nobody likes it. At least not the people you want to attract in your life. Not the people at the highest level. Not the people that you will be best for you. They're not going to be rewarding that kind of behavior. Right? So none of you are victims. Nobody here is a loser. I highly doubt anybody here will not be successful if you start to implement these strategies. You, impl you implement the strategies, those of you online, those of you in person, you will change your fucking life. When? Now! And at any given moment, we're only in the? Now! Okay, I know that half the room's not talking. It's not like my memory is so shit, whereas 30 seconds ago when I heard the whole fucking room, decibels were up here, and now we're down here. So, let's try this again. When are we changing our fucking lives? Now! When? Now. When are you going to change? Now. When do you want to make money? They're not now. talking. I hear it. I don't see it. When are you going to change? Only you. Now. How about you? No, before. Right there. Now. He's not changing now. He's stuck in the past. It's fine. No problem. Doesn't matter. Everyone who doesn't want to participate doesn't have to participate. But those of you who do, let's get it ready. So we're going to find a partner. Get them to pick your nose. Uh, obviously, if you don't want to participate, don't participate. But those of you who want to change your life and you want to participate, we're going to do that. All right? So go ahead and find a partner. Let's get it done. You have five minutes to get your partners to pick their nose.
Anyone find any? Did we dig for gold? Did you just join? We're picking each other's noses. Just have a question though. What time does it start tomorrow? What time do we start tomorrow? 12. Registration is at 12 and we're going to start at 1. So don't be late because that'd be dumb. What is my breakfast? Like check in? Yeah, check in. Yeah. So uh, be here around 12 tomorrow. All right. So we got people to pick their noses. We're like, holy shit, emotional flexibility. Now think about it. You got someone to do something that they usually won't do in front of others. They probably do it five or six times a day on their own, right? Pick their fucking nose. But they won't do it in front of others. Now, what did that do for us? Well, it changed a few things. Do we have an idea of how to pick our nose? Do we have an idea of how to pick our fucking nose? Like, come on, guys. Yeah. Like, where, where the fuck are we? Are we in La La Land? Like, guys, we're not picking noses anymore. Please, eyes up here. Pay attention. We good? Yes? Yeah. Everyone here? Ev is everybody paying attention? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. So we got people to pick their fucking nose. Amazing. Awesome. Congrats. Now, let me shift gears. And let me ask you all a simple question. If you could update your map now... What would you do differently? If there's one thing you could change, ask yourself, what would I change right now? What would I change? Don't say it, just think it. Just think about it. If there was one thing I could change right now, what would it fucking be? Would, it, would I want to get over somebody? Would I want to have more confidence? Would I want to have a better relationship with money? Would I sign up for Summit now if I haven't done that? Right? Because you should. What would I do? Ah, uh, the million, billion, trillion dollar question. What would I change now? Now, most people will go to, I will change my confidence. I'll change my relationship with money. I'll move on from an ex. I'll get over my fear. What if we change something even more powerful than that? What if we changed our ability to change? Ah. You see, this is what thinking outside the box looks like. Now, I'll show you how irrational. Can we close that door, by the way? Can we close that door? Thank you. Now, I'll show you how irrational our beliefs really are. How many people here would say they are a 10 out of 10 in confidence? Be truly honest, raise your hand. The whole room, all right? So everyone else is a 10 out of 10 in confidence that they're not a 10 out of 10 in confidence. Yes. Explain that to me. Yeah. It's fucking retarded because it's impeding your progress. Every time I use that word, that's what we're doing, saving it, right? So what, what does this show us? Well, it shows us that what you believe doesn't even make sense, right? You're confident that you're not confident. You're comfortable being uncomfortable. Like you think it's easier to be rich or to be poor? I promise you, my job is a lot easier than most jobs. The reason is, I work a few hours a week, I make millions of dollars a year, I do whatever I want, whenever I want, with whomever I want, I enjoy myself, I feel good, and then what? Other people go work for someone else they don't like, they wake up on a Monday, they go from a nine to five, they're like, what the fuck am I doing? I hate my life, right? It's like when I was working a job, this is my last time ever working a job, my last day ever working a job, I go to work. I'm a host at a place called California Pizza Kitchen. They come in. They're like, uh, table for four. I'd look, and I'm like, well, I just sat that server, and they get mad, and I just sat that server. Well, that server is a pussy because they're only taking two people, and they can easily take six because that other, other server has seven people, and they, they're not complaining. Okay, I'm going to go seat this server. So then I go seat them, and then they go, Marcel, why are you seating more people on my thing? It's like, listen, I didn't want to fucking be a host, Okay. I wanted to be a fucking server and get tips. Don't fucking complain to me. All right? And then <laughs> I won't seat them the rest of the time. And then they don't get any tips. Why don't you seat anyone? Don't talk to me. All right? Don't fucking talk to me. And then one day I'm working two and a half weeks into this marvelous job. And my manager goes over the radio because we had a radio. And they go, hey, uh, can you go clean the bathroom? I'm like, I didn't sign up for this fucking shit. So I walk in the bathroom and there's towels on the floor. And I'm like. And I come back and I go to the host stand and I'm like, I fucking hate this job. And he goes, 10 minutes later, Marcel, uh, I asked you to clean the bathroom. I go, I did. <laughs> and he goes, no, you didn't. 
And I go in there and there's more towels on the floor. I'm like, you fucking kidding me? Who the fuck came in here in that time? Like the garbage is right there. Why are people throwing towels on the floor? So I kick it under the stall. You know, I just do my thing. I kick it under the stall. So then I go back and I'm at the front and I'm talking to some guests, like some older woman. And I'm like just hanging out with her, talking to her, making her laugh. And he goes, hey, Marcel, can I speak to you for a second? I said, I'm with a customer. And he's like, Marcel, can I speak to you for a second? And I go, all right, see you later. <laughs> I come and he's like, ask you to clean the bathroom. I said, I did. And he goes, no, you didn't. Follow me. I follow him. There's two stalls. There's a small one, which I was kicking all the towels under, and the big one. <laughs> so he opens the big one. And to my fucking surprise, someone has shit on the wall. Now you tell me. No, no joke. You fucking tell me in, in, in what in the fucking world law of physics is happening here. How the fuck is there shit on the wall? I'm looking at that, and first of all, I'm dumbfounded that this motherfucking guy thinks that I'm going to clean that shit off the wall. Like, what the fuck do I look like to you? I didn't even sign up for a host. I came here to be a fucking server, not clean fucking shit off the wall. So he's looking at me, and he's like, you didn't clean that. And I'm looking at him, and I go, neither did you. You fucking saw it three times. And he goes, it's the host's job to clean the bathroom. And I said, it's your job to be the host. <laughs> Take my fucking name tag. And he's like, you can't fucking quit. And I said, oh, what are you going to do? You're going to make me clean the shit off the wall? Like, you know, fine. I won't quit, but don't make me clean that. He's like, if you don't clean that, you're fired. I said, no, no, I quit. <laughs> and I quit. So that was the end of that. And then guess who had to clean the shit off the wall? Probably the server that I didn't like. But, you know, still... I look at that and I'm like, well, who the fuck wants to work a job, a literally shitty job, and make nothing, right? I'd work a shitty job to make like 400 bucks a week. I'd work and work and work. Wouldn't want to go there. My friends would go to the beach. I'd have to show up to CPK and go work. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not down for this, right? So you ask yourself, well, what's easier? Maybe at the beginning it's not easier because maybe at the beginning you're not making as much. It might be a little bit more stressful. You're not used to the right emotional states. You're not used to the strategy. You haven't figured out the solution yet. It's a little bit harder. But finally, when you get your business down, your job down, the system's down, it's easy. It's easy. It's always hardest at the beginning. So if you start, it only gets easier. Now, it's always hardest at the beginning. So if you start, it only gets easier. Now, we look at our map. There's no on road you've never been to. Anyone you ever moved to a new city or a new country and you start to memorize the new location? Or you, okay. So you look at that example and you go, well, this is life. This is the journey you're on. You're memorizing a new location, a new place, new streets, new shortcuts. Problem is you've never been there. Most people look at that and they're like, I'm never traveling. I'm never going to see the world. I'm never going to do that. Why? It doesn't even make sense. It literally doesn't even make sense to me. Your comfort zone is uncomfortable. It is easier to get to where you want to go than to stay where you're at. It takes less effort, less time. All you have to do is up your level of confidence and take advantage of more opportunities. One way or another, the time's going to go by. Question is, what are you going to do in that time? So when we're thinking about being present, I'll give you an example. Anyone here want to learn a quick hack to get over anyone? If you ever had an ex that you want to move on from or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I need 100% I need consensus that yeah. I'm going to teach this. Yeah. Okay. Is there anyone who doesn't want to learn this? Okay. So here it is. So I, I was dating this girl, marvelous girl, amazing, you know, awesome, everything about it. I only have nice words to say. Um, yeah. Anyways, I'm dating this girl. And one night, I'm not, like four months into this really <laughs> toxically amazing relationship uh, where this person always lived in a negative state, life sucks, whatever. You know, I, I like, please cheat on me. Please cheat on me. <laughs> you know, that's what my head was saying. And uh, anyways, I'm out there and I'm, I'm at my friend's show. He's having like a hypnosis show at a bar uh, next to Universal Studios in Hollywood. And I'm with my other friend and he's performing. And I look at him, and my friend's sitting next to me, and immediately, like intuitively, I just had this feeling, like this crazy feeling. And I'm like, hey, my girlfriend's cheating on me. And he goes, what are you talking about? Watch the show. And I said, no, no, she's cheating. He's like, what do you want to do? You want to get up and go? I said, no. She's already cheated. Like, why would I get up and go? Let's just enjoy the show, you know? So we're sitting there, we're hanging out at the bar, having a good time. 
And he's like, how do you know? I'm like, I know. It's not like I got a text. I just could see a change in her pattern or something. I just intuitively got it. So I go to drop him off. He's like, don't you want to rush so you can see? I'm like, I don't need to rush. So I drop him off at home, show up to my house, the time this person lived with me and my parents, okay? Extremely respectful. Extremely respectful. Live with me and my parents. 2 a.m., car's not at my house. Do you want to fucking tell me where what was supposed to be my girlfriend is at 2 a.m. when it should be at my parents' house? Well, not there. And it's not like her parents live here. It's not like she has friends here. Or she had friends. I just didn't know about them if you want to call them friends. But uh, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go find her. So I drive down five minutes. So I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm mean, what am I doing? Like, I'm gonna be up all night looking for her. I don't care. It's done. It is what it is. So I just turn around and I get into a parking lot. And I look, and there is her fucking car next to another car, the only two cars in this parking lot at 2am, random parking lot. Like, that's how lucky I got I made a U turn and happened to show up right in front of them. I'm like, whatever that is, that's funny. So I'm just looking. And I get out of the car, and I go to the windshield, and I'm like looking, and I'm seeing, uh, you know, business. yeah, business being done. You know, like she has, she, she, she definitely has a mouthful here. She has to explain herself, right? So I'm, I'm just watching. I'm like, well, huh? I'm not gonna cock block that. <laughs> I'm gonna let them do their thing. So I, I let them do their thing, and she finishes, looks up looks at me and I'm looking at her. She's looking at me. I'm looking at her. What's up? <laughs> you know? Two minutes later she gets out of the car. Look, it's not what it looks like. I'm like, of course it's not. <laughs> you know? I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay. So what what is it then? <laughs> you know, it's not what it looks like. We were just talking. Huh? His ears are down there, huh? Okay. No problem. Yeah, you have to wipe your mouth from all the spit from the talking because you couldn't hear me. You know, I, I get it. It makes perfect fucking sense. You know? Perfect sense. No problem. You know, and we got back together. And that was it. You know, so don't fucking let your living beliefs make you think that you're getting cheated on when you're not. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Of course not. I'm like, come get your shit. So I go to my house. She shows up at my house like five minutes later. And she's like, you know, it's just not working. And I'm like, listen. She's like, it's just not working. I said her name. Listen. She's like, it's just, I'm like, listen, I'm sorry if I did anything to you that made you feel you need to be with somebody else. You know, and I love you. I wish you nothing but the best. Take care. Tears like down her eyes. Oh my God. No, you don't love me. No, I love you. I love you. Give her a kiss on the forehead. You know, right? <laughs> yeah, really, really, yeah, really strategic. And then, anyways, she went on her way. Now, obviously, look, as much as I'm cracking jokes here, it bothered me. Like, I, I was like, imagine seeing what you believe is your partner participating in an act of, anyways, I, I just said, fuck, how do I get over this? So like, it's my dad's birthday. I didn't eat when we went out. I was just pretty fucking pissed off, upset, sad, disappointed. Why did this happen? Why did this happen to me? And after about three days, Three long days, I got over her. And I did one thing that allowed me to get over her. So if you're a girl, I'll give you one strategy. If you're a guy, I'll give you another one. Because as similar as we are, we're not the same. So men get more jealous over physical things as opposed to emotional things. Women get more jealous over emotional things as opposed to physical things. You look back, back at your caveman self. Well, if you were to invest your time, energy, effort, resources into a woman and you don't know if the offspring is yours, you're not gonna be pretty happy. So that's why we get jealous over physical things. Women, on the other hand, know that a man has to do his thing and he will do his thing no matter what. So she gets jealous over emotional things because that would then mean that the resources you would give her and her offspring are at risk. This makes sense so far. Yes. The reason a girl will get jealous if a guy does something physically is because she believes it's gonna lead to emotional connection. The reason a guy gets jealous if a girl flirts with another guy is because you believe it's going to lead to her getting laid, okay, or cheating on you or something, right, physically, physical, physical something. Now, if you knew for a fact nothing ever would happen physically, you wouldn't give a shit. And if a woman knew for a fact nothing would ever happen emotionally, she wouldn't give a shit. So just so you guys understand the biology there, right? Now, you take that, and this is how you move on. For me, I just imagine myself clearly, vividly, 
in my room. At the time, it was small. It was my parents' room, my parents' house. So it was my, my room, my parents' house. And I, like, imagine it's stacked with, like, all these <laughs> Victoria's Secret models in lingerie. One's, like, scratching my arm. One's playing with my hair. And I'm like, I love you. <laughs> I love you. And I love you, too, Cindy. <laughs> you know, and I'm just imagining this crystal clear image in my head. And I'm like, yeah, I'm the shit. <laughs> I'm fucking awesome. Fucking awesome. You know? And I just got over like that. Because it was so vivid. I'm like, I can have that. So I felt good. Now, a woman should just imagine all these, like, princes and kings from all over the world, like, kneeling on one knee, being like, will you marry me? No. <laughs> will you marry me? And if you imagine that, immediately you move on. But you have to believe it. If you don't believe it and you don't visualize it enough and it's not crystal clear, you're not going to move on. So it takes practice. But the key to moving on is instead of seeing what you lost and looking at now in the future, oh, I'm, this is what I'm not going to have. I'm not going to have this connection. I'm not going to have this intimacy. I'm not going to believe I'm going to get something better. Instead of taking that image while comparing what, you, what shitty thing you had in the past, because if it ended, it's obviously not that good, right? So instead of taking that and being like, look at what I lost, you go, oh, what am I going to get instead? And you look at how much better it's going to be. Instead of focusing on how it's going to get worse, you focus on how it's going to get better. And as soon as you could do that, you move on. That makes sense so far. So this works for anything. This works for friendships, jobs, sales. If someone says no to me here, and I believe that there's a million other people who say yes to me here, will that no matter? No. So this is what I call the abundance mindset. Say it, the abundance. The abundance. So who here wants to have the abundance mindset? Who wants it? Now. Who wants that now? How do we get that now? I'll tell you. It is delusional confidence. Okay? Most people will teach you how to be delusionally insecure. I'm going to teach you how to be delusionally confident. It's the same shit. Takes the same amount of effort, except you feel better and you actually get better results. So most people delusionally are insecure. So they're confident that things won't work out. That's all insecurity is, is they're just confident that the negative outcome will come to life. They're so sure that they'll get rejected. They're so sure that things will not work out in their favor that now they create that outcome. So I'm going to teach you how to be so sure that things work in your favor. Because at the end of the day, it takes just as much effort just as much fucking shit up, okay, to get the negative outcome as it would to get the positive one. If anything, I actually believe it is harder to fuck things up than it is to get the things you want. We fall. So I go up to someone, I'm like, and I 100% believe a girl's going to give you a number. 100,000%. I go, hey, excuse me, what's your name? Cool, what's your number? Guess what? That pickup line works 90% of the time, if you 100% believe it. Because girls are like, what the fuck? Okay, sure. whoop de doo Now, I'm not teaching you pickup lines. I'm teaching you a mindset behind it, right? Now, if a girl comes up to you and she goes, hey, uh, whoops. And she goes, hey, do you want to uh, go on a date? And she's fairly attractive. How many of you would say no if you were single? Not a single fucking guy, for those of you on YouTube, raised his hand. They would all say yes to that. Now, how many girls here go up to guys they like? None. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. What's the shortcut for a girl getting a good guy rather than getting the really big asshole that just comes up to them and t talks to 50 other gr like girls the same night? Shortcut is to go up to the guy you want <laughs> and ask him out on a date. Holy shit. How many guys here would say no to a girl? And if she went up to you and was really nice to you and liked you, how many guys here wouldn't be about it? Oh, well, weird. One guy in the entire fucking audience, okay, wouldn't be about it, right? Only one guy. Now, ladies, if a guy came up to you and he was just nice and he was just like, listen, these are my intentions. I know this sounds weird, but these are my intentions. I like you. You seem really cool. Off our five minute conversation. I'm not trying to just sleep with you. I'd like to get to know you. How many girls would actually appreciate that? No bullshit. Would you be turned off from a guy? You know when a girl gets turned off? Like, whoa, you're so pretty. Oh, oh. All right? That's when a girl's like, what the fuck? Is this guy going to kill me? Like, is he going to fuck me up? Like, girls don't want weirdos. So just don't be a weirdo. The more blunt you are, the more straightforward you are, the better for you. The better it's going to be for you. I've been with some of the most famous Instagram models, some of the most famous celebrities, some of the most beautiful women you could think of. 
And I use the same strategy with them that I would with someone else. It's not hard. Similarly, wealth, money, business, blunt. The easier, the better. What's the best way to sell? Don't fucking sell. Who wants it? I'm the best. Who wants this? Raise your hand. Everyone goes, I want it. Done. It's that easy. Now you can learn how to be more persuasive and influential. It's not always that simple. But the reason I share this with you is because we're always making it harder for yourself. You literally... Imagine this. Are you more likely to buy from someone who goes, hey, you really need this. You need to buy this because I'm amazing because I got this and I got that and, and it'll change your life. And, and, and yeah, I helped, I helped so many people and, and, and I'm, I've gone to school for five years and I have a Harvard degree and I, I also studied my ass off and I have 10,000 clinical hours and, and you should buy for me versus, listen, who the fuck wants to change their life? Okay. Meet me outside. <laughs> Which one's more likely to sell? I promise you from thousands of hours of experience, it's definitely the first one. No. <laughs> no, it's not. It's the second one. Let's try to see if anyone's paying attention. So this is the point. Point is, less is more. Write it down. That is a law that I follow. Less is more. Less is more. That is literally a universal law I follow. Give me an example where less is not more. Diet, less is more. <laughs> Talk about like trying to build attraction, less is more. Trying to sell, less is more. Less is more. You want more in your life? Try less. If someone had it in their life, if someone was abundant enough to attract it into their life, do they need to try more or less? It's already there. They don't try. It's implied in their behavior, their mannerisms, their language. You follow? Good. So I appreciate the participation. Give them a round of applause, guys. <laughs> you too. There we go. All right. See that? That's what participation is about. It's about community. It's about love. It's about family. We're family now. All jokes aside, I actually really appreciate participation. Why? Because at the end of the day, it means someone's paying attention. Now look. There are a lot of things I could come here and teach you uh, that will make your life better. The main thing I want to talk to you about now, which is pretty much what I'm going to wrap with before Owen comes in, is this. I want to teach you what it truly means to look confident, to feel confident, and to be confident. Confidence is the number one thing that has changed my entire life. If I go back in time and you were to take everything from me now, now take my confidence. My level of confidence will allow me to come back exactly where I am right now in probably three months. I shit you not. Now, you ask yourself, well, Marcel, if you could get to where you're at right now in three months, why don't you go somewhere more? Like somewhere higher? Great fucking question. Because believe it or not, as amazing as my mindset is, I still have a map that I have to update. I still have to update my map. So the version of me two years from now could probably get to that version of me in 90 days from now, if I came back in time. Great, I just had a breakthrough. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get there in 90 days. So, I encourage all of you to do the same. So this is what confidence is. Confidence allows you to take advantage of the opportunities that are already there. The opportunities that are right in front of you, that's what confidence does. You think you don't have what you need. You think you can't get to where you want to go. Bullshit. Everything you fucking need is right in front of you. Everything you fucking need is in your life right now. Who here wants more money? Say yes. Yes. Not everyone wants more money. Who here wants more money? Say yes. Yes. Who here wants to have a better relationship? Say yes. Yes. Who wants to be more confident? Say yes. Yes. More confidence equates to more of everything in life because you fucking deserve more. You'll go do more. Therefore, you will create more. So how do we get more confidence? Well, we face our biggest fear. Now, some people like to admit it. Some people don't. Most people have a fear of rejection. So what they do is they'll go approach people to talk to people, but they never overcome the fear of rejection. So what they'll do is they'll take a shot, they'll drink, or they won't do this every day. It'll be like, I'll do this half the day, or they'll do it in a weird way. Don't be weird. Don't even go for an outcome. Most people go up to people to achieve an outcome. I don't give a fuck if someone likes me or not. I truly don't care. I could give less of a fuck if people like me or they don't like me. 
That's what confidence is. Why? Most people walk into a room and they're pinging off everybody else. And they're like, okay, what's, what's everyone giving me? Are they into me? Are they not into me? Are they liking me? Are they not liking me? And you're thinking about what everyone else is thinking about you. What I think about is what do I want to do here? <laughs> I'm going to go have fun. I don't care. And I want to give everyone the ability to do because Most people can't explain it. Confidence equals comfort. If you are comfortable, you are confident. Confidence equals comfort. That's what it feels like because that's what it is. If so, I said, hey, right now, I will give someone $10,000 to pick this up to the ground. Who here would be willing to bet $10,000 on it? Raise your hand. Okay, most of the room is pretty comfortable that they could pick this off the ground, right? Some people don't know how to hypnotize not to pick it off the ground, but, you know, we'll let them lose the bet. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. Point is, is, if you could be confident off the ground, you'd be confident in everything else. The software is already in your head. You just have to associate that feeling to other areas of your life. Does this make sense? Yeah. So the first time I was ever confident, this is what happened. I met this friend group, and out of insecurity, I thought all of them were talking to people. They were popular. They were social. So they were all talking to girls. They were getting numbers. I thought that. I didn't know that they weren't, but that's what I thought. So I'm 15 years old. I'm super insecure. I have braces. I'm like, like really weird looking, okay? And I was still fat. And my friend Sky comes with me to the mall, and I'm like, listen, coach me so the group doesn't like think I'm weird. I want everyone to like me so I can make these friends. Because up until now, I was bullied at my other school. I didn't really have any friends. Nobody liked me. So he goes with me to the mall, and we show up around noon. The mall closes around 8.30. So I'm there until 8 o'clock, and I haven't gone up to one person. But I have probably burnt like 4,000 calories from anxiety. I felt nauseous. Like my fucking clothes are wet already, you know, like just from sweat. And I'm just this gross mess walking around the mall now. And I have 30 minutes left. And over the speaker, they go, hey, ladies and gentlemen, you know, just so you know, the mall's closing in 30 minutes. And I'm like, oh, now the pressure just got even higher because now I have 30 minutes to take action. And the mall is emptying out. People are leaving the mall. So I'm walking. And finally, I, I set my eyes on some girl who, you know, it wasn't like she was extraordinary in any way or anything like that. I mean, I, I barely remember what she looked like, to be honest with you. But she was with two friends. And I go up there and I, I go, hey, uh, I think you're really pretty. Can I get your number? And she, I've never had this reaction in my entire life. And I've done this enough times. And she looks at me. <laughs> she laughs at me. Her friends laugh at me. They didn't say anything. And they just walked away. And I stood there. <laughs> and I, it was so ridiculous that reaction was so ridiculous to, to that comment that I immediately became confident. I'm like, that's what I was worried about. <laughs> it just didn't make sense. And in my head, I'm like, oh, I guess I'm confident now. So then over there, I see some girl it looks like Iggy Azalea. She's 24. I remember her. I'm 15, braces, weird looking, kind of chubby. I go up there and I'm like, hey, what's up? What's your name? Like a different fucking human being. And I go, what's up? And she goes, uh, I'm waiting for my coffee, coffee bean. And I go, cool. What's your number? <laughs> and she goes, I have a boyfriend. I said, so what is it? <laughs> I'm this 15-year-old kid with fucking braces, fat, weird, you know, buzz cut, like, look weird. And uh, she's like, wow, you're really confident. And I'm like, thanks. So what is it? And she gives it to me. And it was a real number. And I just took it. I never called her, never texted her. Actually, I texted her once. I asked her how old she was. She said she was 24. And and that was it. And then I just went to the mall every day and I just did this to gain my confidence. So I got addicted to that feeling. I'm like, holy crap, I can do whatever I want. So anytime I'd feel uncomfortable, the second I would feel uncomfortable, the second that fear would pop up, I would go. I'll take action. Boyfriend, mom, dad, I didn't give a fuck who they were with. I didn't care what they looked like. I, didn't, I just, I'm like, I'm gonna go to as many people as I can. Number, number, number. Never called anyone. I didn't care. Like I was 15 years old. I didn't even lose my virginity until I was 17. Just so you guys understand, like you're good. I didn't even lose my virginity. That's what he walks in on. Right? <laughs> like, what kind of fucking speech is this? So, for those of you, who just walked in. Right? I didn't even lose my virginity until I'm 17, and he walks in. What the fuck? Is this like a porn convention? No, we're in fucking Texas here. All right, anyways, what are the odds? But the gist is, is that I didn't care about the outcome. I just wanted to practice the feeling. And this is what I learned, and this is what I want to teach you. I have the lowest fear of failure of anyone you will ever meet in your life. 
I did it on accident. So truthfully, I got lucky because my intention through these interactions wasn't even to get girls. It was just to gain confidence so I'd look cool for my friends. And then in doing so, I didn't care if I looked cool for them anymore because <laughs> I was just cool in my head, right? And I stopped caring about the outcome. I was not attached to the feedback I was getting. Therefore, I reached a level that I call true confidence. Now, true confidence is when you don't give a fuck what feedback you're getting back in your life. My baby is going on, my state is going up. Jack has been with me, raise your hand, Jack. Jack has been with me for probably almost two years, right? And Jack knows, no matter what's happening in my life, what up, Owen? No, no. Woo! All right, give him a round of applause. There you go. There you go. How was it? Good to see you. Good to see you. Enjoy. You're good. Yeah, we just we just came in. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, no, we'll be on no after. you're good. I, yeah. I, I was just gonna I was just gonna quickly wrap. How many are any guys not coming to come 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 yeah, race yourself. You can hear his voice. He's been filming all fucking day. Yeah, we've been filming all day. Yeah, yeah. We just did a Dallas free tour. We did a Dallas video blog. We did a uh, Houston free tour. Literally the last two days. We actually did a full LK. Here's what I did. I did, uh, I did a Montana video shoot. Anybody of you guys want to see Montana? I did a Montana video shoot. It was like my fucking kids were trying to chase bears. Like, literally, my kids are trying to chase after bears. It's terrifying. Like, fucking bears are going by. They're like, bears, bears, bears. And 